Hi everyone. In this week's Friday Functions video, I want to show you a little trick that I kind of found. Maybe this is another Power Apps hack, but I found this as I was preparing my presentation for Silicon Valley. The demo that I'm going to be doing there is using Power BI Flow and Power Apps in multiple ways to kind of show how you can gain value from using them together. So the first thing that I had done so that you can know the process here is I have a SharePoint list that's managing change orders. And you've seen this one before. This is where people are just submitting change order requests. Maybe they need um, more money because something needs to be replaced or changed or they need more time, right? And so that would be a schedule impact. And so this list is very important for us and it only tracks the current month SOWs. I mean, no, sorry, not SOWs, the current month change orders. So think of change order per month. These go through an approval process. As they are approved, they're actually taken out of this list and put into another list where we can view all the change orders that have been approved. So this one only contains uh, potential uh, change orders. And so what we're doing is we're connecting these to Power BI. So not showing you the entire dashboard because that's a surprise. Um, but here's a little dashboard that kind of I created that sums all the estimates of cost and kind of shows that by contractor, right? Now, I wanted to be able to kind of leverage the data in the dashboard. Now, the reason is because I've created measures or algorithms in my data that I'm going to be showing in tiles, but that is from my model data and not from uh, the SharePoint list, all right? So sometimes we model data in Power BI and it can be really hard to get to that data, but if I edit this report, uh, you'll see that I have a um, what if, right? This what if data right here does not exist anywhere but in Power BI. It does not exist in Power Apps, which, which makes it an interesting little animal because, you know, sometimes I, I don't want to have to create that again elsewhere, but I want to be able to leverage it in Power BI, and I can, right? So um, just to show you how I make an alert, right? So I can just go ahead and put this on that dashboard, the same exact dashboard, and then I can save my changes, and now I can also put an alert on this. So uh, to show you how you make an alert, you just do manage alerts, and add alert, and I'm gonna alert for what if. If it goes over four million. So if it goes over four million, so I probably could put some other way, write that better, but this is um, basically, now I, this has a limit as to how often you can kind of refresh it, and I will be talking about streaming data sets, but this is good enough for now. I'm just going to save and close just so you can see how to make an alert. So I will actually get an alert if that goes over that thing. All right. So let's go back to my dashboard and look at the alert here. I have an alert for this tile as well, that if it gets over 190 K, I want to be alerted. Now I'm going to use this one in my demo just because of the time it takes to get this to kind of like kick in. Um, but, the key to this in my demo will be using measures from Power BI in your app. So actually being able to reuse, reuse measures. And, you know, I'm going to talk more about it, but you guys can get started thinking about the opportunities there. Notice on the bottom of my alert, it says use Microsoft Flow to trigger additional accents. So, and that's what I decided to do. All right. So if we go to Flow now, I created a trigger kind of a workflow. And this is where I kind of hack this. So this may be a hack. We'll see, right? Normally you don't have two triggers together. In my particular workflow, I've got two triggers. I've got the power apps trigger and I've got the, if alert is, um, 
triggered. So this is the new action that we have for Power BI, which is just called what it says right there, when a data-driven alert is triggered. And then I pick the alert that I wanted. Of course, any alert that you've set up will show in the list, okay? But I'm just gonna keep it to the cost estimate uh, because that's what I had tested and, and tried out. And then I put another uh, action, well, the first action, only action really, is give me back to Power Apps, whether that that trigger has been um, launched. So you'll see in all of the things you can get back from an alert, you can get the threshold, like what is the limit that launches the trigger, the title of the alert, and this is what I'm grabbing here. Is it triggered, right? Tell me if it has been triggered. Um, and then the title and the value of the tile I also put here. Now, technically, I could have done this better by making the output for the first one uh, yes, no, because that's really a Boolean, a Boolean uh, value. But I, I put them both text because they work for what I'm trying to do. All right. So after I saved that flow and made that flow, now back in uh, Power Apps, now I can actually associate that trigger to a button. So I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to use action to do it over. I'm in the on select of the button and I'm going to pick flows and I'm going to select that flow, which is called check Power BI trigger. If ever you change schema on your flows, just remove it and add it back. And notice that I removed it just by deleting the on select because it wasn't referenced anywhere else. But I'm going to wrap this. Oops. I'm going to actually put what I had there back because I'm going to wrap this in a variable. And the reason is because after the flow runs, I want to I want to get back the responses. Um, and so I'm giving that the name my alert response. Okay, so that's what's going to hold the responses. So remember, I did two responses here. That's going to hold the responses that come back when that when that flow is run. All right. Now this is awesome. Now I also have two labels. I have label number one, which I could rename label alert alerted, which kind of will say whether it's true, false, whether it's been alerted. And then I can call this label current value, which will give me back the value of that trigger. So notice they both, the text property starts with my alert response trigger, which will tell me true or false and my alert response tile value. So again, when you hit the dot on this, because I put the flow into a variable, you'll get back all of the responses that you set up. Okay. It won't give you anything you haven't set up, but it's kind of cool. You can create your own methods and properties in, in power apps. I love that. Okay. Now if I run this app and just click that button, it tells me that the trigger has been, it had been, uh, cause it went over that value. So I don't remember what the value is. Let's see. So manage alerts, I could have put that in my responses, but it was not 190. And since it's currently 195, obviously it went over, okay? But now what I can do here is I can tell this button right here, right? To fill if uh, my alert response trigger and I think I did it as text, so you have to kind of test is true, then make this red, otherwise make this gray. Okay, so I it is it is coming off uh, coming across as boolean, even though I put it in a text value. Let's see, uh, capital T. I think it is text, but it's capital T. And you know how I figured it out just now is I'm looking at it right here. And so this is a good point to make, and it's a great for the Friday functions video. When you're using Boolean values or numeric values, you don't put things in quotes nowhere, right? Because they're, they're not read that way. Um, they're just lowercase without the quotes for true and false and then numeric, no quotes around it. But the reason why this one came across as text is because I put it in a text output. So you see, when you choose your output, you pick what you want, text or yes, no, or any of this other stuff here, right? 
So you want to put it in a, in a, in the proper output format so that you get it back in power apps in the format you want. So by putting this label here that shows me exactly what trigger is and this to show me exactly what the tile value is, I can actually, you know, watch, you know, kind of look at these two items and put the right thing in my formula. So you can imagine that I can make a little mini dashboard in my app that shows when data limits are exceeded. And there's absolutely no reason why this formula doesn't have to be a button. It could be run in an on start or an on visible. So that flow can be run when the app is opened, things like that. But hey, this is very exciting what I found here. It's a hack, I'm pretty sure. But I'm excited about it because I'm going to be able to do some new things. Now, the other thing is this number right here that I got back, and this is like the really important hack right here, is I can get a number that's in my data model. As long as it's triggering the alert, that number from the data model is available, which is not available in my SharePoint list. Now, in this particular case, I can do a sum of that SharePoint list to get that number, but I can't get that other number we made together, which is this one, the what if, because that was modeled directly in Power BI. And so the only way to get that is to connect to Power BI, the model. We can't connect to the model yet from Power Apps. So I can create a tile against that model value, give it an alert, pull up that alert in flow and get back that tile value from my model. I actually think this is pretty cool guys. And I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble, but this is probably a hack. But I'm thinking of all the ways that we can use this. And here's where I wanna underscore, when you start using flow, Power BI, and Power Apps together, you get these new scenarios that you didn't have before. I wanna wish you a very happy week and I hope you're enjoying your Power Apps Flow and Power BI experience. I'll be talking to you really soon. Happy Power Apping.